Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how to use Storybook with React to create more reusable components or to make it easier to create more reusable components inside of your apps or modules. To get started, let's head to our IDE, open the terminal. As you can see, I've already done so inside of an empty directory. And we're first of all going to type npm init to create a node um, module basically, or a node project. Then we're going to write npm install react and react dom you could do this automatically using create react app but in our case we're actually not going to create a whole app but just components inside of the storybook so for our case just importing react and react dom actually is easier so now what you're going to do next is create a new folder called source and inside of the comp uh, that folder we're going to create a new folder called components which is going to store our components after that, you can type npx sb init, so a storybook init, which is going to check your dependencies, so if you're using React or Angular, and it's then going to create um, the necessary storybook files for that specific library or framework. Okay, so now that it's done, you should see a little dot .storybook folder inside of your IDE, and also inside your source folder, there should be a stories directory that's filled with some examples. So if that's the case, then your install was successful and you should be able to run npm run storybook to start a storybook instance that will show you all your stories and also automatically update whenever a component changes, by the way, which is extremely useful when you want to quickly work on some component inside of your React app. So we're going to let it compile real quick and then we're going to take a look at one of the example stories. So it's right here. We got the button and as you can see, it displays a little React component. There are multiple options of um, what this could look like. And you've got a few controls about the button, which you can just toggle from inside the storybook, like colors and all that stuff. And now we're going to try to recreate this with a simpler component, but still one that can have a few controls just so you know how they work. So to get started, we're going to create a new component it's, uh, inside of a components folder. So it's going to be a folder called test. And inside of that folder, we're going to have a new file called test.js. So this will basically just be our component for now. So export default function test. That was not right. Test. And this is going to return an h1 for now. And it's going to contain the word test. So now let's also create a story for that so we can actually see our component. So to do that, we're going to do a new file in our test directory as well, which is going to be test.stories.js. So basically, this dot .stories part is going to tell uh, the storybook that this is the story that should be displayed. You could also put this inside the stories folder, but I personally prefer it um, to be inside of the same directory as the component because that makes it easier to handle files, in my, in my opinion. So now let's look at the button.jsx file and the button stories.jsx file from the stories folder to get a bit of an example of how all of this works. So one thing you can basically just copy for now is this export default section inside of the stories of the button because we're going to need to kind of alter this but still use it a fair bit. And basically what this does, it, is gives, it gives the storybook some meta information about your component. And basically this will be First of all, example slash button. So example is this folder inside the storybook and button is the name of the component. So we're gonna do components, components slash test because our component is called test and we want to store it inside of the components directory because this of course is an example provided by storybook. Next thing is the actual component. The component is test, which we need to import up here. So import test from dot string dot slash test dot js the js is optional but i personally like to type it just to make sure that i import the right file then we got these archetypes right here which are basically the controls you just uh, saw in storybook that can control colors and all that stuff so if we now just take a look at the storybook and reload then we can't yet see the test because we still need to do one more thing but we can just take another look at the controls so basically our component is going to have the same background color attribute as this button so one more thing we need to do is we're actually going to need to tell the storybook how our um, component is going to be displayed because for some components you might need to wrap something around them for them to properly work in our case this is not necessary 
So we can just say export const component equals an arrow function. And that arrow function is just going to return our component. So for now, this is just test with no contents. So let's reload, look at the storybook. And as you can see, we now got a components folder, which contains our test. So here is our h1 that contains test. As you can see now, we can control this background color um, attribute right here, but it doesn't do anything yet. This is because we actually need to um, pass it through inside of a component. So basically all of these arc types will be passed into this um, exported function as arcs. And you can just uh, then just um, open a few parentheses in here and say dot 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 arcs, which will basically um, pass all of these components as colors or as um, props. This is a color, which will be a prop, sorry, um, inside of your component. So now if we just go into test, say we accept props, and then we just add a style right here. So style, just as a normal React. And we're gonna say background color is equal to props.backgroundColor. Then we should see that our component can now actually update based on the color we provided. As you can see, this does actually work. So changing in color will actually change the color of the component. Now you might think, okay, let's do one more thing because the color, so the background color isn't the only thing we want to change. We also want to change the color. So let's do that as well. Color, color, go back into the story, copy this archetype and just say, color right here. If we now just head back to our storybook, we can now choose multiple colors. So let's go with the purple right here and white right here, or I don't know, green maybe. As you can see, contrast doesn't uh, quite work with these colors, but you can of course find colors that work well. For now, we're just gonna go with white and black. So now you just might want to change something like padding, but you don't really know what kind of padding you want. So you could also add that. So padding is another control you want to add. And that control is going to be a number. And we can actually even add a default value. And we're just going to say the default value is five. So now let's, oh wait, five is of course a number. Now let's take a look at the storybook. And the default value actually didn't work uh, as far as I can tell. Oh yeah, we of course need to actually apply it to our component as well. So padding is props dot padding. Sometimes you might forget something like that, but that's not an issue. So now let's take a look and our padding is actually applied. Now let's change back to one. And um, let's do one last thing. Uh, you might at some point also want to um, use your component without the arcs. So you could now alter the arcs to always be off or whatever. Uh, one more thing is um, you could also just export another component, which is by, this is just an export and not the default export. The default export is the metadata. And um, you could call this something like your component or no arcs component. And as you can see, test now became a directory containing multiple components. And um, you could basically advance this to infinity. As you can see, the same thing was done to the button example. So you got primary, secondary, large, and small. And basically everything you export inside of this um, story now will be um, put into that uh, test directory. So you don't even need to export the real components. So const uh, abc, I don't know, equals an H1 that says uh, A, for example. That should also work. Let me just take a look. Yeah, so you don't really need to use the actual component, but it wouldn't make sense to not do so because that's the whole point of the storybook, to work on your components. But uh, yeah, I hope you can use this to advantage. I think that um, controlling a component with such strong features is really cool, like just changing settings on the fly to test them out or just being able to try out or develop different components 
in real time without the actual application being present can be really helpful, especially if you want to create like module libraries uh, of components or whatever. So I hope you can use this to advantage. If you can, then please tell me what you're using it for. And I hope you'll have a wonderful and good day.